So there are basically two types of tablets on the market right now. There are the really expensive tablets that don't give you that best set of features that you can get. Um, pretty overpriced for what you really get. The value is just way off in the price, like iPads. $500 for something that doesn't do that much and very limited, in my opinion, and some like Galaxy, like Samsung devices or whatever, they're just priced way too high. So today, um, I'm going to take a look at one of the best range of tablets, the bang for buck ratio tablets, which is really great, give you really low prices for a somewhat admirable, you know, feature set for what you actually pay for. So today I'm going to be taking a look at one of the best ones you can get if you're willing to do a little bit more extra work than what you would normally do with the tablets. Hey, I'm Ryan from Tech Times, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Barnes & Noble Nook HD Plus running CyanogenMod 10.2. The design of the Nook HD Plus is that, on the back, starting with it, we have this textured plastic, which is a soft touch and kind of grippy, which feels a lot better, definitely, than the iPad's um, really slippery aluminum, which can fall out of people's hands a bit easily. And again, stated, we have a, it's pretty much a fingerprint mag magnet. And on the lower left hand corner, we have the speaker grill. Looks suspiciously like the iPad speaker grill. In the middle, we have our Nook logo, our Nook information. And then we have our Nook bookmark signature design, which we'll get to in a second for its functionality. On the front, we have this really nice 1920 but 1280 display coming in at 256 ppi it's an lcd display and we'll get to that again later surrounding it however are these really somewhat big bezels which are textured plastic slightly you don't really feel the grooves or any of the bumps like you would imagine but it actually helps enough to help grip the tablets in one hand, and with it being light enough to do that, too. Now, on the bottom here, we have the Nook home button, lo home button, the N for Nook, and the continuation of the Nook bookmark design, cutting off the bezels kind of like a book, which is what the Nook is for. Now, on the right-hand side, we have... Nothing but a sleep wake power button. And on the left hand side, we have nothing. But on the bottom, we have the micro SD card slots, 30 pin dock charger connector, does not work with the iPads, however, and the LED notification light for charging amber when it is not charged yet, and green for when it is fully charged top of it, however, has the microphone, uh, a oddly placed volume rocker up and down, and a headphone jack, regular headphone jack. So that is the design of the Nook HD Plus. So the specifications of the Nook HD Plus is that it obviously has a 1920 by 1280 display an extra 200 pixels in the wide factor, so it's more than 1080p slightly, but you're not going to notice a difference. Giving it a pixel density of 256 pixels per inch or PPI, and the technology used is LCD. Now, it almost bets the iPad's 2048 by 1536 retina display, which is super high and gives it a pixel density of about 264 which is slightly higher than the 256 of the Nook HD display, but you won't be able to notice that much of a difference unless you're looking up really close, like this. This text still looks super sharp, and there's not there's no noticeable pixelation at all in the display. Now, Barnes & Noble also boasts that it is 
apparently, quote unquote, fully laminated screen. And that way it has no air gaps, reduces glare, that kind of stuff. And it has amazing viewing angles, as it stated, which is true. It does have pretty good viewing angles. Of course, it gets darker the more you turn it, but that's normal with all kinds of screens. And you may have noticed that I am standing this nook up without a case. That's because the functionality, as I was saying earlier, of the nook bookmark is that you can stick a pencil through the hole and the farther you push it in, the more it's able to be stable and stand up on its own, more prone to taps. It's not going to fall down because of the extra supports that the pencil brings. And speaking of the side profile, it is about 11.4 millimeters thin, which is not that thin for tablets. Uh, pretty really thick when it comes to smartphone sizes, but since it is a kind of tapered edge here, you will not notice the extra thickness on the Nook HD Plus while you're holding it, because it still feels really good and you won't really notice it that much. Now it weighs about 18.2 ounces, or 515 grams. Now the processor of the Nook HD Plus is that it has a 1.5 gigahertz dual core OMAP processor, definitely not high end at all when it comes to 2014 standards today, but back then when it was made, it was not low class like it is today. But weirdly, you won't actually notice that much of the speed differences at all when you're playing with it. You can see that um, even though the processor might be slow, it still opens apps very fast and uh, smoothly. Well, smoothly might not be the right term, but it opens apps pretty fast and not very much sluggish abilities like you would expect in a dual core processor on this kind of tablet. Now the battery life of it is um, about, they say, 10 hours of quote unquote reading, because this is a nook, but you don't have to use it for its book processors, and it's supposed to have about 9 hours of video, which holds true with my usage. I usually use the heck out of tablets in the first place, so it actually holds up pretty well with it. Now the speed, as I was saying before, might actually be affected by the different software that it runs with it running Cyanogen Mod, but we'll get to that next. So this is the specifications of the Nook HD Plus. So as I was saying before, the software of the Nook HD Plus is that it runs currently 4.3.1 Android Jelly Bean, but it's using Cyanogen Mod to do that. Specifically, Cyanogen Mod 10.2 that runs off of Android 4.3.1. Now, the speed of it affected by the software is actually, again, it actually greatly influences it because it is more stock Android than anything else. You can see the notification bars, quick settings, and the regular notifications. Now, I've actually chosen to use the Google Experience Google Now Launcher for uh, these purposes because I actually feel that the Google Now Launcher is better than the stock CyanogenMod launcher, the Trebuchet, that it sh uh, ships with because Google Now actually seems a bit smoother and faster and it has Google Now off to the side, which is very useful. Now the differences between, the main, probably one of the main differences between this and the regular uh, Nook HD Plus without CyanogenMod is that it has these software button keys which are actually a lot better than the very extra heights from the regular Nook HD that was used. Like it had, um, cause it only had a home button, but this actually still works with the, um, with home purposes. So if we go here and press the home button, you'll see that it still goes home. And we go back here and press this home button, you see that it still works. Now it has these software keys, but if, because of course it does not have any capacitive uh, menu resnaps or back button keys like other tablets do. It only has a home button, so it has, to, it has to add these extra software keys right here. The back button, home button, and resnaps button. Now I've added these two, the search button 
omnipresent that opens up any search thing that you're in an app, and the menu button, which also opens up the menu of any app. As you can see here, it is the Google Launcher menu. And it works pretty well. So that is CyanogenMod and software of the Nook HD+. So, in conclusion, the Nook HD Plus by Barnes & Noble is a great bang for buck tablets. Starting at under $200, from $150 to $170 for 16 and 32 gigabytes, it is a really good deal. The display is amazing. Quality display for what you get. The um, major downsides of this is that of course, the processor might be pretty slow by today's standards uh, on paper, but it actually performs really good in real life performance. And there's also no cameras, which can suck for some video conferencing, but no back camera is a lot more of a acceptance than no front camera, because that stand should be used for standing up the front camera. But anyway. It is still a great deal, and Barnes & Noble, this is their last attempt at making colored tablets, display tablets, not like the e-readers. So it's their last dying attempt for hardware, and I praise them for that. So I'm Ryan from Tech Times. This is the Nook HD Plus by Barnes & Noble. We will see you next time. Like, subscribe, and comment. Goodbye.